Engines of the Past. Dear viewers, in 1921, the Northwestern Railway had a shortage of engines, so Sir Topham Hatt, the fat director, purchased an LNER Grizzly A1 white elephant prototype named Henry in 1922 when he actually wanted a Great Central Railway Robinson 8B442 Atlantic and another Grizzly A1 prototype named Gordon in 1923. But as mentioned in the previous volume, due to a lack of funds, engines had to be loaned from other railways in the mainland. Besides 87546 and 9462, the other loaned engines of the past were Allegretti, Eagle, Afton, a little blue tank engine who teased James about his bootlaces, and so forth. While many fans interpreted their own takes on these, ahem, engines, these stories will describe them. The stories themselves take place before, in between, and after the previous volume, as well as the official Railway Series volume, The Three Railway Engines. Signed, The Author. Alan Greedy's Apples. Based on the original story by The Buried Truck, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. In the early years of the Northwestern Railway, Thomas and Edward came to the island of Sodor in 1915 to help with the construction of the railway. But as time went by, the NWR was short of engines, so the fat director had decided to purchase Henry in 1922 and Gordon in 1923. However, due to a lack of funds, other engines from other railways in the mainland had to be loaned. Three examples were H7546, 9462, and an LNER Robinson Class B4460 tender engine named Alad Greedy. Alad Greedy was painted bright red with yellow lining and black on the dome, four small wheels in front, six driving wheels at the back, and a six wheel coal tender at the very back and a loud mouth to match. He was primarily a mixed traffic engine and never seemed to take much notice of Edward, but everyone took no notice of Alec Greedy. They had to, for he seemed wouldn't stop boasting about himself. One night in Vickerstown Sheds, a couple of days after Edward pushed Gordon up the hill with a goods train, Alec Greedy was boasting as usual. Look at you all, he began, painting in drear greens and moanful blues. Luckily, I ought to bring some vibrance to this shed. Thomas and Edward chuckled quietly, but the others groaned dreadfully. One morning, Alec Greedy felt very pleased with himself. He kept to time, and the passengers told him how splendid he looked. He arrived at the shed and found Gordon being ready for his afternoon train. Not to fail spectacularly with another goods train, are you? <laughs> Alec guffled. Dear me, Gordon, how can an engine like you with a few measly trucks? I hope little Edward is at the ready, otherwise you will be in trouble. Edward gave a pity look, G but Gordon harumphed and hissed away. There's no need to tease him, said Edward. He, oh hush. Alec glared. You come out of the shed for a few days and suddenly think you can tell me what to do? I'm the lifeblood of the mainline passenger trains, and don't you forget it. With my grace and expertise, I'll have the express... Oh, inter Edward interrupted. Is that why the coaches need their coupling hooks mended? When I went to fetch them, because of your... Uh, grace and expertise? Alec Greedy scowled, hid himself in a cloud of steam, and pretended to be asleep. The next morning, the fat director came over to see Alec Greedy. You are to take a passenger train to Brendam Ducks, he said. But sir, objected Alec Greedy, I'm a mainline engine, not a branch line engine. Can't Edward do it? He's fitable for those type of lines. I'm sorry, came the reply. But it's my railway, and I give the orders. So Alec Greedy puffed sulkily away. He clunked into the station, still cross over Edward's remark. B4460, 
Be gentle, be gentle, cried the coaches. Come quietly, come quietly, Alec Greedy snorted as the guard's whistle blew. Silly little engine, he huffed. I'll show him grace and expertise. Alec Greedy would show Edward something, just not what he hoped for. Along the Wellsworth branch line is a church with an orchard. The apple trees are well looked after to ensure their branches didn't obstruct the line. That morning, some of the church boys climbed a tree close to the railway. They thought they steal some apples while the vicar of Wellsworth was preparing his summer ceremony. Careful, careful, John, said one. That branch doesn't look sturdy, very sturdy. It's sturdy enough, said another one. Just you be ready with, to catch these apples. Soon, Alec Grudy came snorting along. He was still thinking what to say to Edward when they next met. Come along, come along, he puffed. The boys saw him approaching. Startled, they scrambled frantically down the tree. The branch John stood on couldn't bear the weight any longer. As he jumped, it snapped, still clinging to the trunk, but dangling over the railway line. Come along, snarled Al Led. Come along. Oh! Hearing the thud, the driver stopped the train. When he and the fireman came around in front, they laughed until they cried. That's one way to get some peace and quiet, eh? Cackled the fireman. Apples were stuck in Allegretti's teeth. They and the branch muffled his cries with indignation. Serves him right. All that boasting gave me a terrible headache, smirked the driver. All day, Alec Greedy traveled up and down the line. The apples and the branch stayed firmly in place. The passengers didn't think he was splendid now. They erupted with laughter as he passed. Alec's face turned red as his paint. Unlike the passengers, the vicar of Wellsworth wasn't laughing. When Alec next passed the orchard, Give me back my apples, you thieving engine! he cried. Alad tried to apologize, but all that came out was muffled gibberish. When the fat director visited Vickerstown Sheds that night, he wasn't laughing either. This wasn't your fault, he said. I've spoken to the vicar of Wellsworth and of keeping his boys in line. However, he went on, I do not approve of the ruckus you've been causing. You will stay as you are until morning. Perhaps a night of, ahem, Quiet reflection will set you straight. He spun on his heel and strolled away. The other engine snickered. I say, little Edward, winked Gordon. What does the old saying go? An apple a day keeps the fat director away? It seems several bushfuls couldn't keep him from Alad, chuckled Edward. Alec Greedy had certainly gained expertise about apples, but fell far from grace. Alec Greedy felt embarrassed. The next morning, some workmen removed the apples and the branch off of his front end, and as soon as he was repaired, Alec Greedy went back to the LNER in the mainland in disgrace, never to return. Now that he's gone, you can be sure... We'll never hear any boasting from him for a very long time. Don't you?